All right, today we have something uh, that's kind of special. It's something that's definitely on the rare side. And what it is is a kosher MRE. You know, we've seen a number of the halal MREs. These are very similar to a standard MRE. They're even in the same kind of bag, it's just that it's you can see through it. But basically, everything in here is halal certified. Now, I'm not exactly sure why, but for some reason, the kosher MREs don't come in the same kind of packaging. I have a feeling that eventually they will, but it seems like they've gone through a number of different phases. And it's all part of the government's effort to uh, apparently provide more menu choices for more different kinds of uh, dietary needs, whether religious or medical. And as far as I can tell, the first attempt to make a kosher MRE was in 1995. I recently did a review of this MRE, and I'll uh, put the link down below to it. But this is uh, back in 1995, this cheese tortellini, you can see here it has a KH on it, which stands for kosher halal. So at the time, they just made one MRE for both kosher and halal needs. And you can also see here it says entree only. That means that while the entree was certified kosher and halal, everything else on the MRE would be standard MRE materials. So as we've seen in the newer halal MREs, everything in here is halal certified. I believe that's going to be the case with this one too. And this was generously sent to me to review by Black Dog Bob. And the reason he did it was this is not only a kosher MRE, but the, the reason I said this was rare, it's actually kosher for Passover. So it's not just kosher for any time of the year, it's specifically for the time of Passover. And in researching this, I realized that this actually isn't a complete meal. It does look basically the same as a standard sized MRE, but with these, this uh, commercial looking packaging, uh, basically this is just an accessory pack, which is what it says on it. And this would actually come with a separate entree. And in the old days, they were the uh, self-heating meals, which are the same kind of things that you can buy commercially. And I believe that nowadays, they actually do come with a standard looking 8 ounce MRE entree in one of the cardboard boxes. But as of the time of this one, this is going to be a little bit older. This time it still came with the, uh, the heater meal. And part of the reason that you can tell that is because it doesn't have a flameless ration heater inside of here. So it would come with its own separate entree that was self-heating. So we'll keep in mind that this isn't complete, but we're going to take a look at it anyway. It's still a pretty rare and interesting item. Uh, and I don't know, it doesn't have a date on it. It doesn't have a date code. From the outside, the only thing I've seen is these um, fish tins here. It does say 3-2012, which I am guessing is either a manufacturing or best by date of 2012, which means that this would be possibly five years old or five years out of date. And as you can see inside of here, most of the stuff in here is commercially packaged, so the stuff isn't in retort pouches. So it's going to be interesting to see, A, if I can date it any better than that, and B, what shape the, uh, the food stuff is in. The cans I'm not too worried about. And then the last thing I wanted to mention before opening this is that in addition to the entree that it came with, I believe the cases that these came in, it would come with 12 of these accessory packs, 12 of the entrees, and it also came with a box of matzah. I actually did have some matzah on hand that I was going to use for this. Uh, since we didn't have the entree, at least I could represent that. But apparently that got thrown out because it was stale. So let's take a look at this. And this is by, uh, and I apologize, I do not know the pronunciation, but this is either La Briute, La Briute, La Briute, or La Briute. I'm not sure. And actually, I did find a video where they were actually putting together some of their kosher for Passover meals. I'll put that down below. It's not the most interesting video in the world, but it, it does actually show these specific things. The, um, not just the kosher, but the kosher for Passover. And I, the one last thing to mention, too, before opening it, as they've, like they've said a few times, is that this does have a very commercial look to it. I mean, basically everything in here is commercial. But if you notice on the little card here, it does say, U.S. government property commercial resale is unlawful just like you find on a regular MRE. And now, let's see, this does not have an easy peel open. So we'll go ahead and cut this one open. And it doesn't seem to smell too bad. It's a little bit, maybe a little bit on the musty side. But here is the, uh, the card. It has the national stock number on it. Meal religious kosher for Passover. And here's actually some information from the company about their uh, Passover meals and warmest Passover greetings. Interesting. So uh, when I first saw this and thought it was complete, I thought the, these little tins here were the main. But apparently the main, like I said, would be a separate entree. And these are, I don't think these are in the standard kosher MRE accessory packs. So this obviously has something to do with Passover. 
We have salmon fillets in extra virgin olive oil and mackerel fillets in extra virgin olive oil. And let's see. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it looks like this must be a Best Buy, the uh, February 2012 and March 2012. So we are, either way, we are dealing with something that's on the older side. And let's see what else we have in here. We have a couple of boxes of sun-made raisins. And unfortunately these are, looks like they're too small to have individual, uh, some kind of like a date code on them or something. And we have coconut macaroons. Kosher for Passover. These, these don't specify a kosher for Passover, but I guess I'm guessing that um, being fruit, it's not such a big deal. But these coconut macaroons are kosher for Passover, and there's the nutrition facts on there. Those seem to be kind of soft. And we have almonds, also kosher for Passover. Now, in addition to the raisins, we also have cranberries, and as we're seeing, kosher for Passover. And so we have this fruit roll. It's a fruit punch one. Actually, we have these at our local uh, grocery store. And it doesn't seem to be completely hard. It still has a little bit of bend to it. And this is also kosher for Passover. So the only thing that doesn't specifically say it's kosher is the um, the fish. But um, it must be it must be acceptable. And the raisins. Same thing, I'm guessing that's uh, considered acceptable. And then we have uh, typical accessory pack items, including Sanka instant coffee, some sugar for that, no, uh, no creamer, I guess, uh, but we also do have tea, orange pico, cut black tea. Uh, White MRE matches, moist towelette, salt, a large salt and a small pepper, and a nice uh, pack of pocket tissues. So you can obviously use these for whatever you need them for, for tissues, for napkins, for toilet paper. And this little, wow, it's pretty, pretty dainty spoon here. It seems like they could have thrown in a regular MRE spoon. It would be a little bit a little bit nicer. But All right, and here is everything that we get in this Kosher for Passover MRE accessory pack. Keeping in mind, of course, is once again that this would come with an entree. So in addition to all this, you'd also have an entree. And I believe it would also come with some matzah. One box of matzah per case. There would be 12 of these accessory packs, 12 entrees, and a box of matzah. Since I don't have the matzah, I'm going to use some standard MRE crackers. It's the closest thing I can find in my house to some, uh, some matzah. And probably the only other thing to mention is that there's two hot drinks, coffee and tea, but no cold drinks. So let's go ahead and check this out and see how it survived the past, uh, apparently, five years. And I'm going to start with the stuff that is um, the most commercial type packaging, as you can find in the store. This is kosher notches, apparently. Fruit punch, fruit roll. I couldn't find any date on this. So let's see how this smells and feels. Hmm. A little bit on the brittle side. Yes, it does not appear to be terribly fresh. And it doesn't smell like anything. It basically smells like plastic. So I think what I'll do is I'll just... I'm not going to go get this all the way out of here anyway. Let me just cut this off. And just... I'll just put it here for display purposes. And the sun-made raisins. I don't expect a box like this with no protection whatsoever other than the outer bag from the accessory pack. I don't expect they would last for five years. Let's see what we have in here. And they still smell like raisins, but they uh, appear to be moldy. And they're very dry and they have some kind of a 
a white substance on them that uh, looks like mold to me. But I'm not really sure. Uh, we'll give them a little try to see how bad they are. But I think one box will be plenty. And we have our kosher almonds. These shouldn't be anything too bad, I don't think. We'll find out. Just almonds. Ingredients, almonds, no salt or anything. And cranberries, these could be in similar shape to the, uh, they look kind of desiccated, they look sort of uh, almost mummified in there. Let's see if these are like the uh, raisins or not. They smell a little bit like cranberries, it's a good sign. They don't have any of that white stuff on them, kind of like mold. So uh, these seem to be better at least. I don't know if they're okay, but they seem to be in better shape. Let's put these up here. And leave a little bit in the bag. And these coconut macaroons. These actually look pretty good. Let's see why there's no dates on any of these things. Let's see how these survived. It smells like coconut. Seems to be fine. A little bit uh, stuck together here. Yeah, they're still kind of soft. Don't seem to be bad. Yeah, the macarons actually do have a bit of a pungent kind of a flavor coming off of them. It doesn't seem to be terribly unpleasant, but uh, it's a little bit overpowering. You don't expect macarons to be overpowering. And since we still have two compartments, I'll use one for the mackerel and one for the salmon. Like I said, I don't know if this has something to do with Passover, with the um, uh, the traditions and the uh, things you're supposed to be doing while, I don't know, you know reading and everything. But uh, for whatever reason, they do have these two tins, and this is basically the main difference between this and a standard kosher meal, as far as I can tell. This is the filet. It's not exactly what I was expecting from a filet, but some mackerel. And the salmon. Kind of like a. What do you expect from um, cans of sardines, but instead, instead of sardines, you're getting salmon and mackerel. As I say, I'm sure that has some kind of uh, meaning. There's a reason for that. I don't claim to be a scholar of kosher history or anything like that. And the ingredients on these is simply the fish and the olive oil. And let's make up our hot drinks, and then we'll try this out. Here's the sink and some coffee. And the Golden Tip brand tea. And between the two of those, we have one little uh, package of sugar. And that's everything that came with this accessory pack. And the thing is, as I had mentioned, the uh, cases were supposed to come with some uh, matzah. So we're going to use these crackers here in lieu of matzah. I just think this would go good with the, uh, with the fish. Oh, and they're uh, not coming out in one piece. That's all right. I think one will be enough for our needs. Let's go ahead and try this out. 
All right, we'll go ahead and start off with the fish fillets. As you can see, this isn't a ton of food, but of course these aren't the mains. The main dish would be the self-heating entree. But one other interesting thing that's in here is the uh, salt. I wouldn't expect to use the salt, or the pepper for that matter, on the fish, but you might need it for the, uh, the main entree. And the salt is the only other item in here that is also kosher for Passover. Specified kosher for Passover. The pepper is not. And the sugar is not. Let's try this mackerel first. Should be fine. It's been in a it's been in a tin. As I said, um, it does appear to have a 2012 Best Buy date, or possibly manufacture date. But it's just uh, tinned fish, and it doesn't smell. And it doesn't smell bad or anything. Basically, the only thing you smell is um, a bit of a fishy smell and the uh, olive oil. It tastes good. It's a uh, I said, I don't know if this would be for some kind of a, um, a ritual type of thing for Passover. And that's why I would have this in addition to having a main dish. But um, I'm just going to have some on this cracker, which is substituting for the uh, matzah. Yep, that's very good. And salmon. Same thing, just a different kind of fish. And just some salmon fillets and olive oil. And that tastes fine too, as expected. So if you uh, got one of these and you weren't uh, celebrating Passover, even if you found the uh, the main entree to be really disgusting or somehow you didn't get one, the nice thing about these is you have the two tins of fish, so at least you have something for uh, protein and, and a little something more to eat than just the sides and snacks. And speaking of the sides and snacks, let's try those. Actually, let's start off with this, uh, this fruit roll. This seems to have uh, held up the least well of all this stuff because um, it is in a plastic wrap and it seems to have basically turned into a plastic wrap. I'm not getting any kind of a fruit smell off of this. Nothing bad coming off of it, but um, it's uh, pretty dry and brittle. Still has some give, obviously. Let's see if it has any taste. And yeah, it still has the artificial uh, fruit punch flavor. Very sweet. Seems to have a lot of sugar in it. Um, it, it, it is definitely uh, dry and a little extra crispy and crunchy than you expect something like this to be. But it still seems to taste good. Probably be good for dessert. Maybe I should have saved that for last. Let's try a little of this coffee. It's pretty good. A little different from uh, your standard MRE coffee. I don't think it's quite as good as the taste of choice, but um, it's nice that it's a uh, brand name, Sanka. And now probably the scariest thing in here, the uh, raisins that have, um, appear to have some mold on them. A little bit, not all of them, but uh, some of them have this, this white coating that I don't think is a, uh, a coating that was put on them. And they still have some gift to them. They're not totally dried out, not totally desiccated. And they still taste like raisins. Mm, it's not too bad. I'm almost wondering if maybe the... Uh, 2012 is a manufacture date. I'm not sure on these cans what uh, what they put on, if they put on manufacture at Best Buy. But if it's a manufacture date, then that means that um, this would probably be good until about 2015. So it would only be about two years out of date instead of being five years out of date. But without anything else to date it, it's really hard to tell. Let's try these cranberries that were in the uh, La Riute packaging. Not so dry, but at least they smell like cranberries, unlike the raisins, which didn't really smell like much of anything, other than a little bit of mustiness. Yeah, they're okay, a little on the dry side. They seem to taste about half like cranberry and half like plastic, I'm guessing because of the, uh, the plastic bag, whereas the uh, raisins were in the cardboard box. And the almonds. Appear to be just uh, raw almonds. And they're fine, pretty uh, basic, kind of, I mean, not a lot of taste to them, but they got the crunch. They haven't turned, they haven't gone bad, not rancid or anything, so, uh, yeah, that's fine, it's good. So the fruit roll-up is uh, it's definitely past date, but still somewhat edible. These three things are all one ingredient items, other than some sugar added, some oil, stuff like that. But basically it's raisins and cranberries and almonds. 
So the macaroons are an actual food item with ingredients. It does include egg whites. Surprisingly enough, the coconut macaroons contain coconut. Let's see. It's not hard as a rock. Mm, seems to be good. You can bite right into it. It's a little chewy, not overly hard. Obviously, first thing off is a taste of coconut. I'm guessing this packaging isn't great over the long run. It seems to be perfectly fine, except it has a little bit of a, uh, a plastic kind of a taste to it from the bag, just like the um, cranberries. But overall, everything here is really good. Keep in mind, obviously, the cracker didn't come with it, but it's representing the matzo. So it was a look at a kosher MRE. And not just any kosher MRE, but a meal religious kosher for Passover. Best I can tell, packed between 2010 and 2012. And thank you very much to Black Dog Bob for sending this along. And thank you for watching. All right, and in all the excitement of finishing this up, I completely forgot to try out the tea, which is an interesting thing in itself because of the fact that uh, MREs generally don't come with tea. So let's give this a try. Yeah, that's good too. It's been steeping for quite a while since I basically put it over there and forgot about it. Could use a little sugar for my taste, but uh, it's a nice touch having some tea along with your coffee.